Women's tennis in Spain has been in a developmental stage since Oranza Sanchez Vicario blazed the trail by winning four Grand Slam finals, giving rise to women's tennis in Spain. However, the last of these would come in 1998 and a bit of a drought would ensue. However, this would be changed when a tall, young and skinny Garubinie Muguruza would burst onto the scene. Born in Venezuela, she would pick up a tennis racket for the first time at the age of three, showing enough potential for a family to up sticks and move to Barcelona, where she would have a greater chance of success. 2014 would be a major breakthrough where Roland Garros Muguruza would send shockwaves through the WTA Tour with her 6-2, 6-2 win over reigning champion Serena Williams in the second round. She would remain steady and benefit from taking the second siege draw by advancing to the quarters after beating fellow Phil Good Story, Pauline Palmiantier, before being ousted by eventual champion Maria Sharapova. But this is, wasn't without having Sharapova on the ropes, as she was up a set, 6-1, and then also 5-4 in the second set. However, she would lose this second set 7-5, and then lose the third set 6-1, suffering a little bit of a letdown after being just one game away from a semi-final. 2015 would be the arrival of Muguruza from just a wonder kid to a potential threat in the future in the WTA scene, as she would make a last date appearance at the French Open again, but no one, even with this, was to see the run she was about to go on to a Grand Slam final, which in my opinion might be one of the most underrated in women's tennis. Where at the age of 21, she would show that her potential was starting to kick into her game. She was using her size at 6 foot tall to serve out points, end rallies quickly, and dictate the match against her smaller opponents, and it would pay dividends, as she would brush off two unseated opponents before stunning 10th seed Angelique Kerber with a barrage of all or nothing shots, and again in a grand slam she would beat 5th seeded Caroline Wozniacki in two sets before beating Tamir Bukzinski in straight sets in the quarterfinals. She would dump Radvanska out and this would put her into her first Grand Slam final. And with the slight chance of an upset being ignited when 2013 Wimbledon champion Marian Bartoli said, quote, For me, if Muguruza doesn't win it this year, she's going to win this or another major at some point. She's not waiting, she's going and getting it, and that's the only way you can lift a major trophy, end quote. Muguruza was now in rare as the first Spanish woman since 2000 to play at a final at the All English Club at Wimbledon, and it would be against Serena Williams, who she had an amazing win over that kickstarted her career the year before. However, as you will probably know at this point, she would lose in two tight sets, 6-4, six, 6-4. Four, six, four. However, this was a great learning opportunity from Muguruza, and she would launch up to world number three by the end of the year at the age of 22. The next year would be pivotal in 2016, where she would play and need to continue her form into the next year to prove that she wasn't a wonder kid and at the French Open this looked like it wasn't going to happen as she started sleepily in the first round against lowly Slovak Schmidlova by dropping the first set 6-3 however she would ramp go on a rampage and win the next two sets to come back and, and win in three sets. Little did we know at the time, but this would be the only set that she would drop for the rest of the tournament as she took flight playing the best two weeks of tennis in her life, where she would beat Kuznetsova and Stoza amongst others en route to her second Grand Slam final, where she would again play against Serena Williams. Now the question was, would the Spanish star beat this opponent who had dominated the game for so long and engulf herself into history? In what was a coming of age match for Muguruza, she would control the tempo of the match with her powerful serve and ground strokes combination, overwhelming the very capable Serena Williams 7-5, 6-4, to become the first Spanish female Grand Slam champion since 1998. However, the theme of her career would begin to show itself, as despite this miraculous win, it had come at a very unexpected time, with poor results at Wimbledon and also the US Open, where she would bow out in the second round for both. 2017 would be another great year for Muguruza, just peaking at the rise of her talents, where she would reach the quarters of the Australian Open before strangely losing to Coco Vandewey in what can be described as a missed opportunity, but despite this downfall, it would be time to take the courts at the All English Club at the Wimbledon Championships and again go on a Grand Slam rampage. She would pick up momentum by outing Alexandrova, Vikmaya and Kirsty, all in straight sets before toppling number one seed Angelique Kerber in three hard forward sets. This was a good omen for Garbinier as the last time she beat a number one seed at a Grand Slam, she claimed the title. In the semi, she would end Slovak Rybarikova's dream run and this would mean that she'd only drop one set up to the final, much like the previous year at Roland Garros when she beat Serena Williams. 
In what was an unexpected matchup, she would play against Venus Williams and claim the first set 7-5 in a tight matter before brushing past Venus in the second set 6-love, which in turn crowned her the champion of Wimbledon in 2017, becoming only the second ever Spanish woman to win multiple Grand Slams. She will capture the world number one ranking later that year and then also be recognized with the WTA Player of the Year as a recognition of her talent and improvement from the tennis community. Another fun fact for you is that that win against Venus made Muguruza the only player to beat both Williams sisters in a Grand Slam final. However, she wouldn't follow up this great form the next year at Wimbledon where she would lose shockingly in the second round against Alison van Oeventuk, which made it the earliest defending champion has lost a dual English since Steffi Graf in 1994. However, Muguruza would embark on a run in the Roland Garros in the tournament before, reaching the semi-finals, which was the peak of her season. However, she would lose against Simona Halep, who would ultimately win the final at the Roland Garros that year. The Stumble After winning the 2019 Monterey Open, making it back-to-back -back years with wins in Mexico, she would suffer an embarrassing loss to the hands of Beatriz Haddad Meyer at Wimbledon, who was 94 places lower than Garbinia in the rankings, which would see her part ways with longtime coach Sam Sumyak, who had overseen the two greatest victories of her career. After a first round US Open exit at her traditionally poor, most poor Grand Slam, she would climb the largest mountain in Africa and do some soul searching and she would finish the year in rank 35 outside the top 30 for the first time in a significant period. However, Muguruza would be down but not out, as in 2020 in the heavily interrupted season, she would have her best result at the Australian Open by brushing off four seeded opponents, with that being Svitolina, Bertens, Pavlyuchenkova and Halep in straight sets. We'd all seen this version of Garabinia before, hitting her straps during a Grand Slam, and she looked primed to claim a third Grand Slam title at Rod Laver Arena, and after claiming the first set in the final, it looked like she might be able to win, however against Sofia Kennan, she would falter, with the consistency of her opponent on the night being the main cause of her Muguruza blowing the lead. As a result, Muguruza would lose in three tight sets, which in retrospect can be seen as a major missed opportunity, as Kennan is only rank 176 at the time of recording and this would be her best run of her career another flash in the pan player in the wta tour after serena williams and many other players retirements 2021 would be the last great year of muguruza uh, in terms of what we know her as as a tennis player as she would confirm to this tennis world that her form in 2020 was no mistake as she would enjoy great form in the tour of the Arab world, where she would win in Dubai against Krejcikova, and then she would lose in the final at Doha against Kvitova. Muguruza would go on a late season run, using momentum to secure an impressive come from behind win against Ange Jabeur, coming down from 3-6 in the first set to claim the next two sets 6-3, 6 love, bageling Jabeur. And this would also lead to her claiming a crucial 500 WTA points at the Chicago Full Classic, allowing her to make the WTA finals, where she would brush through the round robin stage, losing only one match, and she would make the semis. She would beat Paula Bedosa in straight sets before setting up a match with Annette Contevate, where she would steamroll Contevate in the first set before becoming the first Spanish player, man or woman, to win the year end finals decider by virtue of a tight foot win in the second set, 7 5 showing off her punishing when-on game with a barrage of fast serves, powerful grand strokes, and the faster all-or-nothing game that people become to love of Muguruza. She would launch up to third in the world as a result of this. Now you might be wondering, how does a player go from becoming the only person to beat both Serena Williams and Venus Williams in a Grand Slam final, and only the second woman from her country to become number world, fall off so sharply and so quickly? Well, Muguruza would dish up her worst tennis since her first year as a professional all the way back in 2012, unintentionally cooking the recipe for the fastest way to slide down the rankings you could imagine. See, Garbinia made five finals in 2021, winning three of them. She would bow out way early in Doha and Dubai in the round of 16 and quarterfinals respectively, which alone may not be seen as poor results, however resulted in nearly a thousand points being lost in just these two weeks alone. Couple this in with the fact that she did the worst thing as a seeded player in high level tournaments, which of course is suffer early losses, not making it past the semi second round in any tournaments besides Toronto, Tokyo, Doha, and the US Open. Where at Wimbledon, she had a pitiful display with a loss to world number 88 Greet Minnan in straight sets. 
Six four six love with the game reaching peak levels of inconsistency with something clearly wrong. An inability to defend her WTA Finals title had claimed the year before was the final kick in the guts as it saw Muguruza fall to an unbelievable 55th in the world, her lowest ranking since 2013. However, the steep decline wouldn't end there as this year Muguruza has had serious concerns over her future at the highest level of tennis. And in what was seen as a great chance to set things straight at the Australian Open, she would seem to be firing on all cylinders by taking the first set against Belgian Elise Mertens 6-3, before again blowing another lead in the second set, losing a tiebreaker 7-6, and after having a great chance to win and make the second round, gain some much needed confidence in her game, gain some much needed points, she would go ahead and lose, with Merton blitzing her in the third set 6-1. She would slide outside of the top 125, currently sitting at a startling 129 at the time of recording. This was soon followed by her withdrawal from the current tournament Indian Wells, citing personal reasons which likely holds the hidden meaning of taking a mental break from tennis, seeking a plan to return to formal greatness. Now the question you all probably want to have answered and are asking at this point is can Muguruza return to her former glory? And well, the complicated answer is yes. She's 29 turning 30, so she's still theoretically in her athletic peak, and she has a powerful game that when it's on and being consistent, and few players in the WTA tour can match. Her problem will be that it takes a long time to get her ranking back up, and it could take around half a year to a year to do so, and by that point she'll be 30, pushing 31, and also she might not be able to secure automatic qualification to Grand Slams as she is outside the top 104, she might be able to secure some wild cards for the tournaments like the Roland Garros and Wimbledon that she's won before. However, some of her peers that employ the similar big hitting game style uh, make way less unforced errors. So that's definitely something Muguruza needs to reel in if she's to have one last run before choosing to retire or before fading into obscurity. I think Muguruza can have one last run in her. I think she can return to the top 30. However, this is a steep decline and it's not something that she's faced before in her career well, at least since the start of her professional one. Either way, not too bad for a kid from Venezuela who achieved her dream of being a pro tennis star. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to tell me what the rest of 2023 will look like for Gardabinier. And otherwise, please like and subscribe. And until next time, thank you for watching.